Okay, here's my support. In the next 20 minutes, I'll try to tell you about what continuous integration is, what it's supposed, how it's supposed to work, and why it doesn't work, how it's supposed to work, according to my experience and according to my understanding of this concept. And then I will try to show you what's the missing component in this idea. And if we put this component there, the continuous integration actually starts to work. It's quite a controversial subject, and I'm expecting questions after, but I'm, I'm, this is who I am. I, a CTO and founder of a software development company, uh, we develop software in uh, very extremely distributed teams. So we have about 50 programmers right now, and they're all working from different places. We don't have a central office. We work in remote teams. The teams are distributed, and they work. They all work from different countries. And at the same time, we are very focused on continuous delivery and on very frequent releases. So we release many times a day our projects. And we've gone a long way from, we, we, we've used different tools for continuous integration. So we started from Apache Continuum about, Continuum about five years ago. That was one of the first products, host product. So we had a server for that and we ran it on the server. Then we tried cruise control, cruise control, and then we switched to Hudson, and then we switched to Jenkins. And about a year and a half ago, we switched all our projects to Travis and to AppVader. So the Travis is a service, is a, probably you know about that, and AppVader is, is the same as Travis, but for Windows, the Windows product. So now we're you know, active users of these two things, so we are using continuous integration. But again, like I said, it doesn't work like it should work, according to my experience. So, and now a few words about what continuous integration is, just a few minutes. This is me, this is you. And we both, we both work together on the same project. I have my own code, you have your own code. Probably I work on the branch, you work on the branch. I'm working on the problem number 14, you work on the problem number 45. I write something and you write something. We probably share some pieces of code in the same files. In order for us not to have problems in the future when I change something and you change something and we can't actually merge that stuff, we want to merge it as frequently as possible into the same branch. This is not continuous integration yet. This is just, just, just version control, which is year, which is, I don't know, 40 years old. There's nothing new in this concept. We just have, well, many people use Git for that, and we don't need any continuous integration yet. This is just a, a perfect version control, and we want to merge as often as possible in order to avoid merge conflicts in the future. So if I keep my code for a long time, and you will make a lot of changes, and you put your changes in the master branch, then in a few weeks or in a few days, I will have so many problems with actually merging my, my code with yours, then I will probably have to throw away the code. So that's why this is, this is just regular merging. This is the good practice. And now the continuous integration. The continuous integration is exactly the same, but we put in the picture the build server, which takes the code regularly from the master branch, builds it, and tells us, me and you, what's the status of this, of this stuff. So besides Git helping us to resolve conflict, conflicts, uh, the, the syntax conflicts, this stuff helps us to resolve semantic conflicts. Because sometimes you change something, I change something, there's no actual conflicts in the lines, so we can't just merge without any merge conflicts. But when we try to build the whole file, it just doesn't compile. So that's why we need a build server, and this is what continuous integration is. So we want continuously to get one of these three signals. The green one means that everything is fine, we can continue. The red one means that we put something in there, me or you, which actually broke the whole result, and we need to stop together and do something about it. This is the idea of continuous integration. And now, the famous book, what it actually says about continuous integration. It says that crucial, if the build fails, if this build server gives me the red signal, then the development team, which means me and you in this example, just two people, stops whatever we are doing and fix the problem immediately. This is the fundamental, the crucial concept of continuous integration. And this is what doesn't work. It works when there are two people in the, in the team. But if there are more people, then the first question is who actually needs this? Who needs us, for example, 25 programmers, to actually stop everything? like the book says, to stop what we do and fix the problem which was introduced by one of us. The CTO, 
who's actually paying for this development? Does he need 25 people to stop and work on something which is broken in one of the files? No. The product owner, the product owner wants the product to be delivered as soon as possible. He doesn't want us to stop and fix some bug in one of the files. And the architect, no. The author of this, of this problem, probably the author doesn't want everybody to stop and fix his particular problem. So there is no, uh, there is no intention, there is no need for any one of this, of this team to actually stop the full development and fix the problem. Basically because it's too late. So what happens in reality, what we see in reality, is that this is the, the screenshot of my, one of my open source projects in Travis. So what we see is the build is green, the build is red. The build is green, the build is red. So what happens in reality, in all the projects I've seen before, is that nobody pays attention to these signals when the team is 25 people. We have continuous integration server. Continuous integration server gives us signals, the red, the, the green, the red, the green. But we basically ignore it because nobody cares about it, because nobody needs to, to do anything. Nobody wants to stop working on what we are working on right now. And we just let it go. We just, we just ignore the signal. We have this continuous integration built. We receive this information, but we don't pay attention. Because this is not in our backlog. This is not in our, this is not our objective. This is not what we are paid for. The company or the project pays us to deliver the product, not to fix some, some, some signals or some, from, from some continuous integration server. Wait a second. So uh, this, is, this is what I've seen. The biggest, the, biggest, uh, uh, the biggest argument, which I hear back to this to saying that, is that, you know what, we have a discipline in our team. Our team is disciplined and we don't have that situation. Show me the next. So the discipline means that the continuous integration, you can hear, you can read many articles about that, many books, they say that, for example, in Microsoft, if somebody breaks the build, we give them this special hat which he has to wear for the whole day. This is what this whole idea is based on, blame. So the idea of this hat is actually to find the guilty guy and to blame him. So don't break the bill because you're gonna wear the hat. So we don't want to be blamed and the blame causes fear. So I'm as a developer, I'm afraid to break the bill because I don't want to wear the hat, or I don't want to be the, the bad guy. I want to be the good one. So the fear, I'm afraid to break the bill. If I'm afraid to break the bill, I keep the code in my branch longer. I do not integrate it as often as possible because the, the, there's a huge fear for me. I don't want to integrate five times a day because there is a, there is a chance that I can break it five times. If I integrate it once a week, then you know, I'm afraid to, to do it, but I still have to. It's going to happen once a week. So the chance of breaking the build is higher. So I keep my branch longer, which causes the throwaway code because sometimes I keep the branch for so long that eventually I can't integrate it at all. So I just throw away this whole code and I start from scratch. I've seen many examples of that in practical, in real projects. The throwaway code means losses. But this whole discipline idea is wrong because it's based on blame and fear. We can't work productively if we are afraid to integrate our code into master branch. We should do it many, many times a day without any fear. So the build server, the continuous integration, is supposed to help us, not to blame us, not to show us the red flag, which we're afraid of, which we would like to stay away from. Continuous integration is supposed to help us, but it doesn't help us. It basically leaves us a, red, a, a red flag, which is blame, which is fear, which is long breath. So what is the solution? What do I propose? This is what I've seen. This is my experience in many years of working on different projects, commercial, open source, different, many of them. Exactly the same thing is happening. So what I propose is, this is the missing component in this whole picture. The missing component is here. So we should uh, prohibit developers to commit their code directly to master branch. They shouldn't be able to put their code directly. They shouldn't be able to integrate when they want. They should give their code to the merger, which does exactly the same thing as the build server, but before merging the code into the master. So before the code goes in here, it is built here, and semantic conflicts, syntax and semantic conflicts, are resolved before the code is being built. In this case, the build server will, in 99, 95, 95, 99% of cases, will show the green flag. Because we build here, we merge, so when I, I get the code, I want to put it here, I can't, because there's no permissions, I can't push my, my branch to the master. So what I do is I ask my merge machine, the merge server, to get the master, merge with my stuff, build it like it's gonna be built here, 
If it passes the build, then commit. In this case, in most most of the builds will be green. Most of them. And if it's going to be red here, this is something really exceptional. And in this case, like the book says, we stop. We all stop. We understand that the syntax problem, the syntax conflicts were solved. There were no semantic conflict because the build actually passed. But then, for some reason, some you know strange exceptional reason, here we get the red flag. That that will happen really rarely. And in this case, I'm, in this case, it's reasonable for the whole team to stop and actually solve this problem. So this is the missing component, which the properly just like the proper team, and the properly organized project needs to have. We run, like I said, we run 50 programmers from different countries. We have about 25 projects running at the same time. We build many times a day, and we very rarely have red flags here, full of flags here, because we use this merge component. We designed it ourselves, we made it open source. If you're interested, you can talk to me later. I'll show you what's the name of it. So we made it as an open source product, and we use it in all our projects. And we don't have this problem, and continuous integration, in our case, works. But in all, our, in all other cases, which I've seen in other projects, it just doesn't work. It's just a nice red flag, red flag, which doesn't mean anything. We just continue to develop, ignore these red flags, and then white and then green flags, and let it go. So that's that's it. That's all I wanted to say. This is my blog. This is my Twitter. If you're interested, we'll talk later. That's it. Great. So you, oh, yeah, so yeah, I'm talking about actually a merger. So what about actually a queuing system? Why wouldn't you actually put everything into a queuing system? And then push that back to the person and say, hey, this is broken. Everyone else can continue going. That's exactly, exactly what the merger is doing. Yeah. Oh, it does. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's, a line, it's a line of branches. You just put your branch in there and say, merge my branch as well. And the merger actually, it's a, line, it's, it's a queue of branches. And I take yours, I try to merge. I try to merge and build. And then I push it there. If I can't, I give you a signal, no, your branch is no good. And I take it there. So not everyone will stop. No, and over, no, nobody stops. We just go one by one. One by one. So it's an integration branch. It's a we can it's not integration, it's master plus mine branch. So I get the merger, if I'm the merger, you give me the branch, I get your branch, I get the master, I put them together, no conflict, I build everything, I push the master. So there's no extra branch. Just two branches, yours and master. Yeah. But you can't push there directly. Yeah. We just don't trust you. We don't trust anyone, we just trust our build. So I get your branch, I get the master, I put together, no merge conflicts, I run it, no semantic conflicts, I push it. I means the merger. Gotcha. It's automatic. But then, but then why would you do it again? Again, after the I meeting on the server? That's a good question, because sometimes, for some reason, some builds, the builds are not 100% stable and, and consistent. Sometimes the build fails now and it doesn't fail later. And for, it, it happens. If you design the system is big, then some of your tests will not be consistent. They sometimes may fail, spread it. Like one time out of 10 runs. So that's why sometimes you will get the red flag. So the merger will, will give you a false signal that everything is clean and push the stuff into master. And then continuous integration server will actually help you to give the red, to raise the red, red flag sometimes. So it's, yeah. So in this system, your devs bottom and the team will be picking their conflicts as one goal, which is what Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah our developers, they resolve all the conflicts on their own volition. So you have your branch, it's up to you as a developer, it's your problem, how you can resolve the conflict and prepare your branch. When your branch is ready, you give it to us with the merger, I, I try to merge it with master. If it's okay, it's okay. If it's not okay, it's your problem. So nobody's going to help you. Like you, you solve the problem on your own volition. And in this case, we can have 25 developers working at the same time. They all have no fear. They're not afraid. Because you give your branch to, mer to merger. The merger says it's no good. But you didn't hurt anybody. Because it's just your branch. You just give the, the signal, this red flag. But it's, it's personal. It's just your red flag. That's your branch is no good. No problem. You just, yeah. You probably have heard anyway. This is no good. Lives on the open CI server, but have you delayed anybody? Is it pushing the, the issue out to the merge server? It's only about people trying to get through. Yeah, the merge server is quite busy. Yeah, it's it's a line. Sometimes the queue is quite it could be quite long because if, if the build even especially it's a good question. Even especially if the build is long, like 20 minutes for example, and we have like 10 developers, then if we have 10 branches and on the third day, then the third means much to compile time and then no one can move forward until the merge the merge is complete, right? Yeah. You're just, yeah, sometimes yeah, you're just we have, the bottom of the sometimes yeah. we have this kind of conflicts as well. For example, you created something, your branch, and there's another branch, and your branch already is in master, and then the merger tries to guess the second branch, and there's a conflict with your code. Yeah. But this 
again, this conflict is resolved before the code gets into the master branch. So the master is always clean. That's the point of continuous integration. The new developer comes into the project, and we always trust the master branch. We always trust what's there. We don't need, we don't need to wait for everybody to stop and fix the master. The master is clean in 95% of the time. While in a traditional continuous integration approach, master is, like I showed you in the graph, the master is broken 50% of the time. And you can't trust the master. You get the code from the master, you start developing your stuff, but you don't know whether it's stable or not. Because, because we know that nobody is going to actually stop everything and fix every single problem in master. And there are many of them, many of these problems, especially if the team is big. In our case, it's 95% it's it's clean, so you always can trust master. And if master is not clean, then, then we should raise a big concern. Yeah. So it sounds like one of the biggest benefits here is when you onboard somebody This is our. This was the biggest concern when we started to, to invest to, to invent this thing. The fear. We don't like to work in a fear-driven you know, environment. When I'm afraid to, to break something. I don't want to develop in something and afraid to break your stuff. I want to develop in free mode. I want to break to do anything. And then if I push, I want the server to tell me you broke something. No problem. But I didn't break the whole process. I didn't break the project. The project still goes on. It's just my particular branch is broken. It can be merged. And it's my job to spend a little bit more time to fix it. I'm going to spend it. Yeah. So it also pulls away uh, a lot of problems of the senior waterfall devs going, I'm not doing this, it's, I don't need to, I'm a professional. It's like, put it in and you don't have that, that loss of face of failing to. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> the merger is a queue which means it's serial. Yeah. Right. So your only hope is either you're doing small changes and you build as fast. Otherwise, at some point, you would just not scale. And the second question I have is, if I'm a CTO and there's a bug on the site, and I said, I want to fix it now, will you have the ability to prioritize your merge above everybody else in queue? Good question. Yes. Uh, to answer the first question, yes, this is serial. So they go one by one. And if the project, if the duration of the build is quite build is quite long, like 30 minutes, I've seen 45 minutes build, then that's a big problem for the project, especially if there are many people. Because sometimes you just can't merge everything during the day. You just have some branches staying in the queue for night time, and then it's a problem. So to solve that, make your build faster. Make your build faster, make it 45 minutes is not a good build. It should run in five minutes or less. And to answer the second question, yes, we can prioritize. We can just say that, well, in our merger, this function exists. In, in your implementation of the merger, you can implement it as well. So you can put stuff, some stuff on top of the queue. But this is urgent, so merge it first. Yeah. In this case, other developers will be a little bit offended because they were waiting for, you know, I did my branch, I was waiting to be merged, I see my, my position in the queue is number two. But he's the CTO. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then at some point, boom, another branch is on top of me, and I have to resolve the conflicts now right. because somebody's doing something. So in this workflow, how many people are doing this? No, we do pull requests and code reviews, of course. Yeah. We work on GitHub. commit your code to your remote branch on your on your fork on GitHub for example and then you send us a pull request and then we get your stuff from your branch from your fork from your repository we merge with our master and then we build this stuff so we don't we're not touching your fork we don't build there we build the, the we always build the, them together master and your branch yeah, to resolve I know a lot of these things are far manageable Travis is doing this yeah but they are building they're just your code they're not merging master into they're just building there and telling you, okay, your branch is clean, but this is not enough because it's, this information is not going to help. Because still, you put your stuff in master and then you broke the semantic conflict. So, if people have this information, they get the notifications of their own notifications that they're going to have problems to solve in the next three months or Environment development. Yeah, they develop in parallel, and of course, it happens. While you're doing the code review and you're doing something with your code, somebody else made it quicker, faster, and get in front of you, you have a merge conflict. But 
It's all right, because again, this is your problem. The problem is focused on your particular, like just your computer, just your branch. Everybody else, they don't have this problem. They don't know about this problem. So master is always key. That's the point. No matter how difficult it is for the developer, we're basically pushing this you know, problem of integration to the, to the shoulders of developers all. So they're all now responsible for their own merge operations, but the master is key. So the overall result is better, but the, 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 the headache for personal heads are higher, which is good for parallel development. How many uh, developers have you seen this scale to? Well, the biggest project I've seen is 25 projects working at the same time. I haven't seen anything bigger, so I don't know how exactly it will behave, but 25 is kind of on the edge, so and the amount of the, the line of the amount of branches is quite high, and the full day is busy like merging, merging, merging. So this merger is actually a busy server, always, always doing this operation. So what's the, what's the hiking between all the merge servers? You can't do the parallel. That's the point. So the merger can push to master only one by one. You can't just push two branches. So you need to push one, and then you push and get this code again and merge to the next branch again. You build and you push. You build it. So it's not a limitation of resources. We can put many servers. It's a limitation of Git, you know, of, of the idea of merging. So once you merge, you need to wait to, you need to go only one by one, serial. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Can I switch it off? Yeah, sure. It's still filming. Mm-hmm.